Brian Walter, class of 1981, has achieved excellence in his chosen field and has faithfully served the Catholic community and Bishop Lynch. Brian holds a degree in petroleum engineering from Texas A&M and an MBA in business administration from the University of Dallas. Brian has worked with his family's oil exploration companies and has stayed active in his Catholic community. He has he held leadership roles in professional, social, and Catholic organizations, including serving as Grand Knight of the Knights of Columbus Circle 799. Brian and his wife Karen are proud parents of three Bishop Lynch alum, Kimberly, class of 2015, Whitney, class of 2016, and Benjamin, class of 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, we are proud to introduce one of our 2019 Distinguished Alumni of the Year, Brian Walter, class of 1981. My Bishop Lynch story starts in the spring of 1977. I was walking home one day from middle school and I was reflecting on the day's previous events. I was 14 years old. Uh, we'd lived in Dallas for about a year and a half and it wasn't really a particularly good day at school. Uh, I went to a public school, to a failing public school, and had a lot of problems. That morning, I'd witnessed a gang fight, probably 20 different kids, and it's pretty graphic for a bunch of 13 and 14 year old kids to do. Um, it, was just, it just wasn't a good situation. And then it kind of tapered off from there, you know, from the bullying to the, uh, the intimidation and the shakedowns, and it just, it just wasn't a good place to be. And so as I walked home, I'm thinking, you know, I got to get out of this place because this is just the JV. I'm getting ready in six months to go to the high school, and that's where the varsity thing is. It's just going to get worse. My brother Doug was already there, and he'd bring home just worse stories than what I just told you there. And I just kept walking, thinking, you know, there's got to be, a, there's got to be another way. And at the ripe old age of 14, I'd already been to six different schools, not because I flunked out or, or, or disciplined. <laughs> But my parents moved around a lot, and so about every two years we'd move somewhere. And I had about I had knew that I went to three public schools and three private schools. And so you know I knew a little bit about what a reasonable school ought to be, and this was not a reasonable school, and it wasn't a really a reasonable route for me. Uh, anyway, I walked home. I just thinking, you know, there's got to be a different way. It's not like I, in 1977 you go to the internet and type in you know my local schools and get rankings and everything. You know, my world probably revolved around about a one-mile radius where I could ride my bicycle. And I'd already been there a year and a half. I didn't really know as much uh, about the area. Didn't know have a lot of friends. And then one name popped into my mind, Greg Duncan. Greg was the son of Melba and Bob Duncan. They owned a uh, meat uh, shop over near Fair Park. And they were bridge buddies with my parents. So over the last year and a half, we'd gone to their house, and they'd gone to our house, and I'd met Greg, and, and he told me he went to the school called Bishop Lynch. And about, you know, you don't talk about a lot of school back then. I just knew that he had to wear a uniform, and, you know, he seemed pretty happy with it. Other than that, I didn't know much about it. So that night, I decided to make my big ask. I was going to go to my parents and ask them if they would send me to Bishop Lynch instead of going to this other failed public school. I went and talked to my parents, and they didn't say yes right away. They had to think about it. It was a big big commitment on their part. My dad was starting a new company, uh, and we had five kids. If I went to Bishop Lynch, my mom would have five kids and four schools. And, you know, it was, it was a big commitment for them. Anyway, fortunately for me, the next day, uh, they agreed to send me to Bishop Lynch, and... I was headed off. Fast forward six months later, uh, the first day of school, I was an incoming freshman. The student body was called to the legacy gym, which is what we call it right now. And uh, everybody gathered, you know, the freshmen sat in their spot, the sophomores in their section, the juniors and the seniors. 
and the faculty and staff got up and started talking. And the faculty started talking about the high expectations of Bishop Lynch and what the expectations were. And uh, the staff got up, the coaches got up, the band got up. Uh, of course, the drill team, uh, you know, talked about excellence and veritas. And, you know, the bar was set pretty high. And, and, and while we're listening to all this, there's kind of a low murmur going around in the student body. And then Father Gambro gets up and starts to approach the microphone. And the whole place just goes silent. I mean, we knew that guy, he, he must be the main man. I didn't know who he was. I just showed him. This is a pretty serious deal. And so he gets up and he says, you know, I'm here to support you. If you have problems in your academics, you have problems with uh, any kind of social deal, you come see me. But if you have problems twisting off or doing something, I will find you and you don't want to see me. <laughs> I mean, this guy's serious. So then he, he kind of turned his attention and addressed the different classes. And he said, you know, freshmen, as long as you're, you know, you're new guys here, uh, you know, you'll be okay as long as you, you know, follow the rules and, and just, just, just keep straight and narrow. And then he looked over to the sophomores. And this is one of my favorite lines that I remember today. He's like, you know what the definition of a sophomore is? Of course, there's a rhetorical question. Nobody dare you know, answer him. He's like, you're a wise fool. <laughs> Just because you've been here one year, you think you know everything, and you're getting ready to do a bunch of foolish things because you think you can get away with it. But that's not the case. And then anyway, he went on and started uh, you know, to set the sophomore straight. And then he went over to the juniors and seniors. And, and, and right then, when he was kind of talking to the juniors and seniors, I, I kind of had one of those clairvoyant moments. I'm thinking, you know, I only own, own, know one person in here. There's probably 900 people in here. It's hot as hell because there's no air conditioning. You know, I gotta wear a tie. This is the longest I've ever worn a tie in my life, and I'm over here grabbing it like this and moving around, and, and you know, and, and things would be a lot tougher than what I thought of. You know, what I was getting into. But you know what? These people care about me. They want to see me succeed, and that's a big deal. And I just said, you know what? I think I'm the luckiest guy in the room. I just found an oasis in the middle of an academic desert. Now, if I went through the other path, maybe I could have gone and got to the same path where I was, but it had been a hard road to follow, and it still is a hard road to go. I just thought I was just a lucky guy. Anyway, my experience is a lot like other Bishop Lynch alumni, and it's kind of a little recipe. Uh, you know, there's, there's a if you look at the demographics of an incoming freshman class, about 250 students. About, there's about 50 schools that make up that pot. So if you take out the big feeder schools, there's probably, what, maybe two or three different people from each school coming in. So it's really kind of a, a geographic mixing bowl because there's not a lot of, you know, cliques that are here and everybody kind of needs to get together and make their new friends. And, and uh, in addition to that, you got students like me who are happy to be there. They're glad, and they're ready to go and learn. On top of that, you've got parents like my mom and dad who will support this and try to help as much as they can, you know, everything they can do to keep you uh, going forward in Bishop Lynch. And the most important thing about Bishop Lynch, the most important thing, bar none, is there's God in the classroom. And that's just huge. And, it makes, and it's not only in the classroom, but it's celebrated in the classroom. It's just a game changer. And, you know, once mom and dad kind of realized this, uh, you know, then they start sending, well, Junior had uh, such a good time there, I'm going to send his brother and sister there. So there's a lot of families, like the Farrells, everybody's going to Bishop Lynch. And that's not unusual either. Uh, in fact, that's what happened to us. And probably one of my most proudest legacies of Bishop Lynch is that because I went, my brother Craig went, my sister Laura went, and my brother Blake went, and my three kids went. And it, to me, to have that positive influence imparted on somebody in their formative years is a big deal. And I'm just really, really proud of that. One thing I haven't done is I hadn't mentioned my wife. <laughs> I know I need to... 
I mentioned her, otherwise I get in trouble. <laughs> and so when we, our kids went here, the first thing she did is raise her hand, and she wanted to volunteer early and often. And, you know, and, and she did. And she volunteered and volunteered and volunteered, and I think the culmination of that was she spent six years on the Bishop Lynch board. Sometimes I feel like she's more of an alumni than I am. <laughs> she got six, six years on the Bishop Lynch board, and I got four years of, you know, going to school here. Um, anyway, I, uh, you know, there's 11,000, I think, uh, graduates. I'm not sure who makes up the Alumni Association uh, committee or how they choose something or how my name bubbled up. I'm not even sure how, why I'm up here speaking, but I'm honored to do it. I'm humbled to be here with Maria and Tim, and I thank you for listening to my story, and I still think I'm the luckiest guy in the world. Thank you.